So some things that are missing is, for example, if you had a flow of energy through a system, what we'd want is a protocell that can harvest some of that energy in order to maintain itself, much like living systems do. So we came up with a different protocell model, and this is actually simpler than the previous one. In this protocell model, it's just an oil droplet with a chemical metabolism inside that allows this protocell to use energy to do something, to actually become dynamic, as we'll see here. We add the droplet to the system, it's a pool of water, and the protocell starts moving itself around in the system. Okay? Oil droplet forms through self-assembly, has a chemical metabolism inside, so it could use energy, and it uses that energy to move itself around in its environment. As we heard earlier, movement is very important in these kinds of living systems. It is moving around, exploring its environment, and remodeling its environment, as you see by these chemical waves that are forming by the protocell. So it's acting, in a sense, like a living system trying to, to preserve itself. We take the same moving protocell here, and we put it in another experiment, get it moving. Then I'm going to add some food to the system, and you'll see that in blue here. Right? So I add some food source to the system, the protocell moves, it encounters the food, it reconfigures itself, and actually then is able to climb to the highest concentration of food in that system and stop there. Right? So not only do we have this system that has a body, has a metabolism, it could use energy, it moves around, it can sense its local environment and actually find resources in the environment to, to sustain itself. Now, this doesn't have a brain. It doesn't have a, you know, a neural system. This is just a sack of chemicals that is able to have this interesting and complex lifelike behavior. If we count the number of chemicals in that system, actually, including the water that's in the dish, we have five chemicals that can do this. So then we put these protocells together in a single experiment to see what they would do. And depending on the conditions, we have some protocells on the left there that are moving around, and then it likes to touch the other structures in its environment. On the other hand, we have two moving protocells that like to circle each other, and they form kind of a dance, complex dance with each other, right? So not only do individual protocells have behavior, what we interpret as behavior in this system, but we also have basically population-level behavior similar to what organisms have. So now that you're all experts on protocells, we're going to play a game with these protocells. We're going to make two different kinds. Protocell A has a certain kind of chemistry inside that when activated, the protocell starts to vibrate around, just dancing. So remember, these are primitive things, so dancing protocells, is, that's very interesting to us. Um, <laughs> the second protocell has a different chemistry inside. And when activated, the protocells all come together and they fuse into one big one. Right? And we just put these two together in the same system. So there's population A. There's population B, and then we activate the system. And protocell Bs, they, the blue ones, they all come together, they fuse together to form one big blob, and the other protocell just dances around. And this just happens until all of the energy in the system is basically used up and then game over. So then I repeated this experiment a bunch of times, and one time something very interesting happened. So added these protocells together into the system, and protocell A, protocell B fused together to form a hybrid protocell AB. That didn't happen before. There it goes. There's a protocell AB now in the system. Protocell AB likes to dance around for a bit. Well, <laughs> protocell, protocell B does the fusion, okay? But then something even more interesting happens. Watch when these two large protocells, the hybrid ones, fuse together. Now we have a dancing protocell and a self-replication event, right? <laughs> <laughs> 